On June 25, 2009, the entire world mourned the loss of Michael Jackson. Leading up to the one-year anniversary of Michael's untimely death, Katherine Jackson sat down with Sonia Lowe to speak for the first time. Here is that interview. How has this past year been for you since you lost Michael? It's been hard. It really has been hard. But with uh, friends and loved ones and family around me, I'm doing okay, with, and especially with prayer. So it helped me cope. Right. Was everyone remembering Michael and honoring his legacy right now? Can you tell me why you decided to write this book? Well, one reason was I wanted to shed some light on who Michael really was, because he was so misunderstood by many right. people, and they really don't know what a kind and wonderful and gracious person he was. And I'm not saying it because he's my son. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it because it's the truth. Okay. And if anybody got to know Michael, they would know that he was that type of person, lived very giving, very loving, very caring. What was it like when we worked on this book together? What was the process like for you? It, it was nice. It um, brought back a lot of memories, and then it brought back a lot of tears. But um, all in all, I had fun writing it. Mm -hmm. um, was it hard for you sharing those photos with, with me and with essentially the public? Did you no, want to not keep? Really, no. no, because um, I wanted the world to see. I wanted to shed some light on the type of person that Michael Jackson was, and um, he was misunderstood by so many people that they didn't really know what a wonderful and kind, loving heart and a giving person he was. If Michael were around today, what do you think he would think of the book? Do you think he'd like it? I think he would, he would love it. Why? He would, because um, he knew that a lot of the people believed the allegations and believed all the stuff they was hearing that the media was putting out there. Mm -hmm. And he used to come to me sometimes and tell me, he said, Mother, just think of what I love most in this world are children. And they... Uh, <clears throat> And I'd rather slit my own wrist before I hurt a child. And this is what they're trying to pin on me. And um, I just want them to know that uh, Michael wasn't like that. And the first child that they tried to accuse Michael, he had come forward and said Michael didn't touch him. And he had said that before, but he was afraid because he was afraid of his father. Mm -hmm. But. The father has committed suicide since he came out and told it. So um, maybe his conscience was were bothering him. The reason he did it, I don't know. But uh, so this book is a chance for you to clear the air and just let people know yes. more about Michael. Catherine, there were so many beautiful photos of you and your family that you shared with us. Do you have any favorite photos yourself that made it into the book? Yes, I have many favorite photos. The favorite of Michael is he's always smiling. Mm -hmm. And every time I think about him, I always picture him smiling. That's beautiful. You, um, you shared a lot of stories about Michael growing up and into his adulthood. Um, can, do you remember the first time you spotted Michael's talent when he was a baby? Can you share that story? <laughs> yes, the first time. It makes me smile when I think about it. The first time I noticed that Michael had talent is um, we had a Maytag washing machine, and it was pretty old. And with a large family, you just can't purchase things all the time. So we had an old ringer mm -hmm. washer. And it was rickety, and when it, every week would have the agitators would go, you know how they go, tink, tink. And this <laughs> one was so rickety that it had a tink, 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 like that. And Michael was there on the floor wearing a diaper and had his little bottle up, and he just dancing to the rhythm mm -hmm. of the, what the washer machine made. And I noticed then, in perfect, perfect timing, I noticed then that he had talent. Wow. Especially for dancing. Have you seen any sort of similar talents in any of his three children? I have noticed um, talent in all three of Michael's children, and all three of them are uh, very talented, but they, what they, they know what they want, 
And so this is uh, Paris loves the piano, and she also wants to be an actress, and she is already. <laughs> but um, she wants to play the piano, and she still plays it, but um, she plays by ear, and she can pick out any song that she wants to, and especially her daddy's songs. And um, I'm thinking about, well, we, we have, we've been looking for a piano teacher for her. Prince has a lot of talent also. He, um, he's very talented with the camera and with electronics. And he, um, he wants to be a cameraman. And he wants to, to write movies. He's, done, he's shown his talent in that. The kids around the house with him, they do a lot of little things. And they always call us to the theater room to see him on the screen. And uh, he's very talented that way. And Blanket, he just, he loves to sing, and he plays with his toys most of the time. He's very young yet, but he can carry a tune very well, and he has rhythm, and he can dance. How are the kids doing right now? Kids are doing fabulous. They're doing good, and they're, they're straight-A students, and uh, they're doing very well. They have homeschooling. They want to go to public school. Not public school, but we told them they have to go to private school. So we're looking into that. They've been looking at several schools. Let's talk about when Michael was younger. Again, some of the stories that you told me. Do you remember the first time Michael did something charitable or the, the first event that occurred in his life that triggered him to want to be as generous? One remembrance that I have of him, and I always tell this story. Uh, remember when they used to show the little African kids? Um, so sick, little pot bellies, very starving to death, flies all around their mouth and face. Well, we, Michael and I would lay there on the floor watching TV, and like nuts, we both stay in there crying. <laughs> and Michael looked up at me and he said, Mother, he said, one day, he was only a kid then, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to help anyway. And so, after he got old enough to manage his own money and do things, he sent underprivileged children, scholarships, college scholarships for children, helping everything he did was for the children. Tell me about the time he took you to New York. Michael invited us all to New York, and because he knew that he had promised me he was going to do this. And um, we went to a hangar airplane hangar over in New Jersey. I think it was New Jersey or New York so long ago. And um, all this food and boxes and things stacked up and people were loading it into this airplane. And Michael had bought all of that and was shipping it abroad to some country for underprivileged and poor people. I was very proud of him because he had remembered and he gave up until his last day. He was just a giving and loving person. As a devout Jehovah's Witness, Catherine does not celebrate birthdays, but she recalls how generous Michael was and how he always went out of his way to make sure that she got the royal treatment. Well, I can remember <clears throat> Michael and his brothers together and they know that I don't celebrate holidays and they know I don't celebrate like Mother's Day and things like this, but they always, I can't say disrespect me in that way, but they always brought a gift for me. And uh, they've given me cars and they gave me a party and uh, invited my favorite pianist and uh, Floyd Kramer. <laughs> and um, then they had a I'm telling the story of what happened, but um, and then there was a long ribbon that led all the way to where I was sitting, and then they had me to follow the ribbon, like follow the yellow brick road, <laughs> follow the ribbon, and um, I did outside, and there was a Rolls Royce with a big ribbon on top of it. They had told Janet to go shopping for a car of my favorite color, <laughs> and she had bought a pair of red Rolls Royce. <laughs> but I did change the color <laughs> later. 
And that's so um, that's one of the stories of them giving. And Michael had given me so much. I can't, so much stuff that um, jewelry, house, everything. Well, in the book, you told me the story about uh, your Encino home. Can you yes. share with, with us what happened? Yes, when he, when he was 18 and um, had his own money, he had said, Mother, I'm going to buy you a new house. And so we went shopping all over for a new house. And homes had gone up so expensive. And we couldn't find a piece of property we wanted or because the house I'm in now, it had, the kids grew up there and had a lot of room. They, read, they uh, rode their go-karts around the yard, played basketball, went swimming, did all of that. And we couldn't find a, a large piece of property, so we decided to just stay on there. And he said, you know what, I'm going to remodel it. So we stayed there. We bought a townhouse and stayed in it until it was built. And I'm there still. But um, the children love it too. They swim, they do play foot, football, basketball, everything. So I decided to just stay there. Great. And because it was from Michael, now I don't think I want to move. <laughs> Special memory. Special memories. Catherine, so many people around the world were affected by Michael's death, and a lot of his fans have have been in touch with you, and, and there's been a huge outpour of support. What do you have to say to to Michael's fans and everyone who's been supporting you this time? Um, <clears throat> since Michael's death, um, the minute I imagine the fans heard about it, there was a huge outpour of people were coming to. California by the hundreds. Planes, I heard that planes were full of people, full of fans and mourners and all. And I'd like to say thank you so very much to all of them that gave their love and support. And, um, and, um, and I'd like to say that I love them and I know Michael loved them so much until even um, one of his securities told me a story. He said that Michael, when he hired him, he talked to them a lot, him a lot about what he wanted them to do. And he said, especially be good to my fans. Because so many securities are rude and they push them back and they treat them. But he said, please be good to my fans. And I know um, Michael would really, if he knew how much love and support that they were giving, it would make him really happy. And I'd like to say thank you very much, fans, and everyone else that cared. Is the book Never Can Say Goodbye, the Katherine Jackson story, a sort yes, of a tribute? Yes, that's one reason why I wrote the book. I wanted to give back also. So a lot of people and a lot of the fans would know a lot of things about Michael that they didn't know. In the book Never Can Say Goodbye, you discussed um, how close Michael was with his brothers and sisters when he was growing up. Mm -hmm. How's the family doing now? Well, um, I have seen sadness. I have seen so much, and um, in, it has grown, the family got much closer together, even the grandchildren. They come around more, they, um, and they give their support, and they help out with the children, and they um, company for the children. They all go swimming, and they do a lot of things together now, and, um, <clears throat> and I have six great-grandchildren. So um, they bring them around also, and so they all have fun together. We play games, which we did before, but now it's even more of them joining us. Eccentricity comes with the territory when dealing with superstars like Michael. In this next clip, Catherine describes the first time Michael came home with Bubbles, his new chimpanzee. Oh, well, the first time he brought Bubbles home, I didn't know that he was going to bring him home because he had talked about getting uh, an um, chimpanzee. And so I told the, the, one of the trainers, I said, I don't want a monkey here because I don't want anything here that can't go to the bathroom and wipe his butt. <laughs> he can't go to the bathroom and clean himself. And um, 
He said, oh, he can do that too. I said, how can they do something like that? <laughs> and so about a week or two later, Michael brought him home. And I was shocked to find out that they act so much like humans. These chimpanzees, if any of you know about them. He, he was a baby, but he would go and stand in front of you and hold his little hands up for you to pick him up. Just adorable. And everybody fell in love with him around the house the help, the cook, all of them. So we didn't have much problems because they all wanted to see after him. Catherine went on to share how she wants Michael to be remembered by the fans. I would like for Michael's fans to remember him <clears throat> uh, about what he gave to them and what he gave to the world. And that was love, mm -hmm. happiness, and support, and, um, and what a kind and loving person he is. And I'm sure they wouldn't be a fan if they didn't know that, so I think they will remember him for that. Catherine talks about Michael's dedication and what he did to make sure he was always performing at his best. In our Encino home, Michael built a um, studio and um, <clears throat> and he used that to record a lot of his songs in, in order to stay fit for his performances on them. Um, um, when he gave his concerts, every Sunday he would go upstairs in our, we had another room up over the garage, and he made into a little studio for dancing and exercising. He would go up there and dance for two hours straight without stopping. So he wanted to be ready for his two hour or hour and a half, whatever, um, concert. And so it paid off. Did you go to many of uh, Michael's concerts when he was performing? Yes. Um, I go to a lot of Michael's concerts. Every one that I could when I didn't have a service meeting uh, to go to. And even when uh, we go on the road, I go to every one that I could, and sometimes people would get, I never got tired of seeing it over and over and over again, because I thought they were just that great. They were very good. Any favorite concerts that you've been to? Uh, I have to say my favorite concerts of Michael's, all of them, but especially the Victory Tour. I, under, I loved that one because he had all of my sons in it, all six. Do you remember where you were when he did the moonwalk for the first time? Oh, yes. Um, it was the 25th anniversary of Motown. And uh, all of Motown's artists was on the show. And Mike was on the show with his brothers, and he did some uh, songs with his brothers. And all the brothers left the stage. And uh, I was surprised they were leaving him up there alone. And uh, I was thinking, oh, what is he going to do? And that's the first time I saw him do the moonwalk. And the theater went crazy. They just went wild. As a mother, Catherine loved all the music that Michael and his brothers created, but she did have some favorites. I loved uh, Man of War. I loved the message that says, don't go to war no more. Study peace, because peace is all we need. And I also love Michael's um, Man in the Mirror, that's one of my favorites. And a lot of the dance songs, a lot of the fast songs, but I especially love Man in the Mirror. It's another message. Michael Jackson died in his home from cardiac arrest due to an apparent overdose from the surgical anesthesia drug called propofol. Speculation instantly swirled around Michael's sudden death. Now, Catherine reveals the last time she saw her son alive and who she thinks is responsible. The last time I saw Michael before he passed away was about a week and a half. And um, I had gone to visit him. The children were there. Grace was there and the cook. And they had offered me dinner, but I had just eaten. And um, we talked. We played around and had fun together. And Michael even showed me a movie. Um, just some footage that he had taken because he had a new instrument there and it was really nice. He just played on the bedroom wall 
and that was the last time I can remember seeing my son alive. Those are my fond memories of him because I never looked at him after he passed. I, didn't, I don't like doing that. I wanted to remember him smiling and laughing and having a good time the last time I saw him. If you could see him again, what would you say to him? My goodness, I'd have so much to say to him, but the main thing I want to know is what really happened. Do you think that anyone could have done anything to prevent what happened to him? Um, of course, it, it could have been prevented because he had hired a doctor to watch over him. And um, the doctor was negligent. Out of all of the people in Michael's life, who do you think he adored the most? Out of all the people in Michael's life, I think Michael adored his children more than anything else, and they adored him. Um, as far as his friends, I wouldn't know of any of those. Rumors surrounding the custody of Michael's children became tabloid headlines. After it became clear that Catherine would be raising Prince, Paris, and Blanket, many were surprised to learn that Michael's ex, Debbie Rowe, was still not out of the picture. And apparently, that's just fine with Catherine. Uh, my relationship with Debbie Rowe is very good. I had met her before Michael died. I met her afterwards, and I was introduced to her by Mark Chappell. We met, and we clicked right, right away. Um, she's a loving person. Catherine, what do you have to say about the rumors about Debbie Rowe wanting to uh, take custody of the children back? All the rumors that um, was in the press after Michael passed away about Debbie Rowe wanting to take the children away, completely false. I met Debbie and we clicked right away. And um, Debbie is the children's mother and she wanted to see them. And she would always be their biological, always be their mother. And I see nothing wrong with her, knowing her children and visiting with them. Catherine, if Michael were still around today,